these are the things when you talk about, Hey, let's improve core gameplay. Um, yeah. you know, the, after the restructuring, my big role is being the person inside of the company that's screaming about gameplay and gameplay only. Like that's, yeah. that's all I have my eye on. Well, I, I think cool. you did a great job with the, those proposal, um, you know, sheets, cool. uh, Let's you do know, it. And I know Walking Keys, you know, did a good job of setting that up for everyone to see. So that, I think no, it's okay. a good, good bouncing off point. A quick disclaimer about these: these, this, none of what you all are, are seeing is actually official from Splinterlands, mm -hmm. even though we're, we're works there. What this <laughs> is is you talk to the community and then you kind of organize thoughts and filter them, and you did some research on industry yeah. top level, you know, top level games combined it all and put forth these proposals to kind of you know uh codify what the community has been saying all this time so draft mode tournaments have been the most requested thing when we talk to players uh who are either coming from a background of magic the gathering hearthstone other large tcg games right um and draft mode is there's two different ways to do this right there's draft mode with packs or draft modes with ghost card tournaments or ghost cards draft mode essentially is uh like in magic the way that you do it is that everybody buys six booster packs they open a booster pack they look at all the cards in it they take one card out and then they pass all the cards to their right and then the person gets the cards that were passed to them and they go i also want this card and they, you know what I mean? That it goes around the circle. You also have a way that sometimes it'll be all right. If uh, 20 people are entering X number of packs are bought, they're all open, put into a center. And then it's done like an NFL draft style. You know what I mean? Where you have the list of everything that's available and you go, okay, I want this one. And I pick first and the next guy, uh, this one. And then it's like, it allows you to either choose because you're keeping the cards afterwards do I go with a card that's worth the most or do I go with a card that's going to be better and help me actually win the tournament? You know what I mean? Because something may be worth a ton of money, but you don't have any other cards to like support it in the stuff that you draw. So it's like, yeah, I get this card, but I know I'm going to get shellacked when we go into the actual tournament itself. Right. Um, and that's all with purchase packs. There's also a ghost car or a, a ghost card style of doing draft mode tournaments, which is like, we have X number of cards and players are like given an option of here's three cards. Pick one. I pick this one. Okay. Here's another three cards. Pick this one. And it's right. through draft mode so that it's like still limited cards. You know what I mean? Um, so that it's, it's, it's still, more, it's the skill of building a deck and right. making the best, like the best situation of a bunch of bad options <laughs> instead of just being like, Oh, and, I need Kitty to be competitive at these certain levels. Right. And random options. Yeah. So like, it's just, you know, creates a new atmosphere every time. And, and it's, that becomes a very intricate part of the actual battling is the yeah. building. And you know, like, there's, yeah, it, exactly. It's like a bots aren't going to like being there because it's all incomplete data sets, right? Exactly. Like they, they never know what it's going to be. And then they don't know what the other people are also going to have. So you can't yeah. be data setting it out. Um, but the other thing too, is like, um, it, it's the biggest thing that people don't get outside of like, yes, it, it makes it so that we use up a bunch of card packs and it's a good economy stimulator. Um, it's the number one thing that Friday night magic groups play because it's fun. It's fun yeah. to get together. You're going to keep the cards afterwards. So like, even if you get your, you know, your, your butt kicked. At the end of the day, you're like, ah, I did, I did what I could. It was fun to get together. I can't believe that, you know, Gank took that card right before I was gonna take it because, like, that was what I wanted. Like that, it's a, it's an experience tournament as opposed to like what we currently have, which is like, all right, I'm gonna check, submit a bunch of teams, check back in 12 hours to see what happened. You know, right? And um, it's, and it's a new movie every Friday night. It's, yes. it's, it's a little different. It's a little, you know, even though it's the same you know, process. It's, it's the randomness makes it different and unique. And that, that is attractive as well to, as opposed to like, 
oh, just logging in to play that same tournament that you yes. play and that and everyone's used to. I think the other big thing too is that it's really easy to onboard new players with this, right? Like mm -hmm. they come in, they don't know anything about the game. Cool, you pay this fee, you're gonna get a whole bunch of cards that you're able to keep afterwards, and you go straight ahead to play them, you know? Like right. this isn't yeah. to where people get a bunch of packs and then sit on them until you know we sell out and they hope that the value goes up. No, it's like you automatically open them. So, you know, we not only have them actively doing it, but then they get hands on and they start seeing like, oh, that's not how you play that card. And it's okay because you're not like losing ranking or ECR or rating or all this other kinds of stuff. You just go and like, you don't win the prize, but you still get the stuff. And in a world now where no one likes to read the directions, yes. people can just jump in <laughs> and they're also like, you know, they get a little pot stuck because they, ha they now have these open packs uh, and they have these cards in this game. So after it's over, you know, now they can get a little more curious and start to dive in with why they just got shellacked. Yeah. And it like, I will say some of the, like looking at the cons, it does require resources to enter. Like this is not a, when I say it's not cheap, I don't mean like it's uber expensive, but you're paying for a bunch of packs plus some funding that goes towards the prize pool. Right. So right. like, it's not going to be five dollars you're not gonna this is not for people who are looking to be like min max it and be like oh if i you know pay twenty dollars i need to get x amount of value back out of those cards that's guaranteed like it's like right 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 sometimes you're gonna draw a dope gold foil a lot of times you're probably gonna get trash in there and, <laughs> and that's now what and, and those are the people that we you know those are the the players though that we should be trying to attract anyway like the ones that are extracting value from fun and entertainment not solely from min maxing and and seeing you know am i going to definitely get x this you know 3x back or however they, they may view like mm -hmm. what what's worth it to them so i, I have a couple of quick questions Spe you yes. know speaking to what you're saying gank about value um how long would this take roughly how many players do you need to do a single tournament like do you, is it a you know 12 person 16 32 500 what is I, it i think you can play with as many sign up you know what i mean like we'd be shooting for at least probably 50 50 to 64 okay. you know what i mean and so i'm sorry you're like a, just, Mar a March Madness bracket. Yeah, exactly. And it's like after you after you draft and get your cards, you shake up the bag with all the names on it and just put them on a bracket and and go to town on it. And then how, how long would it take? Would it be like a twenty four hour thing, or would would it be like a live thing? Like you start playing your rounds right then. I you start playing because again it's an experience thing, right? So like you right. you play it right then. You don't want people to come back and check back later and and do all that kind of stuff. It's like in that moment you just open the cards. You have to figure out the the synergies and the like right. how you drafted and all that kind of stuff. Like the the pressure is part of it. So and probably probably like sixty to ninety minutes. Yeah, about you know, and it may be a little bit longer depending on how we do the the drafting style. Sure. Yeah. You know, because that like, would be the fun part is the draft. Like that's the yeah. exciting part. I mean, not not the fun part, but a big fun, big aspect. Of for this. some people, that will be the fun part for sure. Yeah, the, yeah the, like the the building, the the GM yeah. style. They they of, get the uh, the different experience, right? It's like if you're a, a tournament guy, you're just there to like. I want the best cards that I can find. Like what is the the deck that I'm building? Right. Or you have other people who again like are looking at the value of the cards or like maybe I want to be able to do a little bit of both. Like I'm up and down or you know like whatever it kind of is, I feel like draft mode offers a way for people to like interact with the game the way that they want to. Yeah. Now how I, I, how much like would it. this cost ideally for you, Beer Beer? Well, if it's six packs, so the cost of six packs plus the the tourney fees, right? Yeah. So I mean, like, I'm looking between twenty five and fifty bucks, um, because again, the every everything that we talk about here tonight for these proposals is geared to one crowd, and I stole the title of the crowd from Gank. It's dinner and a movie players. Like, <laughs> if we can go for dinner and a movie players, we're set, right? And that's what yeah. this needs. If it gets quickly too expensive. Yikes. Yeah. Like it's just as another thing that Splinterlands is begging people to spend 10 grand on. But if we make yeah. it really cheap, then it's like 
not like you have to make it worth it in a sense of like, you know how if you can put something up for sale for free and people think it's trash, but if you sell it for $5, all of a sudden you'll have people being like excited about it. Right. We need to attach enough value to it that people go, Ooh, all right. It's enough that I, I need to go in and I need to pay attention. I can't just draft the cards and then not care about the actual tournament part. Like they need to be fully invested all the way through and everyone's a winner everyone wins six packs yeah you know like everyone's everyone's gonna come out a little more you know intelligent about the game and and have a little more connection on from on a social level um you and, know, it, this... and again it's that level playing field it's that mm -hmm. if you lose you cannot go back to the same well of complaints of saying like ah they just have you know yoden and they have a yeah, Yoden yeah. and I don't have a Yoden and that's why I lose every time. Well, you know, like, or cause if the people who do go, Oh, well, you know, the cards that I got just weren't good. And it's like, okay, well that's the format, <laughs> you know, like that's the, what it is. So you can't that's really, on you. yeah. Like you right. can't be too salty about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. we do have a good question here and just to be clear, none of this is actually uh, official, we are just mm -hmm. talking about ideas that are be, being presented to the team. Um, but just in general, not I mean, not really specifically to this idea, but let's say the team wants to start doing these ideas or start running through some of these uh, proposals. What What is the timeline to get something, do you think, like this up? I mean, this is not obviously something we'll be playing in, in January. Um, but do you see this something – like a new format, one of these coming to fruition, maybe by Q2 next year, or I don't yes. want to put a date on things. I hate putting well, dates, but well, let me, let me say, happening. let me say that it's less about how long this takes the larger issue. And I, I don't know if I've said this to you guys, I've said it out other publicly places, you know, but after the layoffs, people were worried about, Oh, is the company going to go under money wise, you know, and I, that's not it. That's not what's going to screw us. What's going to screw us is that we have a ticking time clock from players right now. Like it, it's, we don't have the ability to kind of sit on our haunches and go, oh, well, you know, I'd really like it to take six months so that I can get it right. We don't have six months to get some of this stuff out. You know what I mean? Like it, it's crunch time to, to get moving. Like conservative estimate would be five months pushing it, which is where we kind of are right now is, three to four right and that's and that's like while we still accomplish other things like no longer are the days of land where it's like oh we say three to four months to get this done and nothing else comes out until this comes out right like it needs to be if this is being worked on there's other things that are coming along with it yeah and as um, much as land is going you know people are excited about land it is not something it, that in and of itself probably won't or you know will bring in a flood of new players as something like a draft mode where yes. you're starting at a point where you're having you know 25 bucks you get into a tournament you can play well, for an hour and a half or whatever yeah you have to like the way i describe it internally is if you play like world of warcraft or any big mmo game right the land is the like post game like it's the uh, the like after you beat the game, you know how there's always like that extra stuff for people once they've beaten the game to continue playing on. Yeah, accumulate stuff. And... Yeah, that's what land is. After you've beaten Splinterlands, <laughs> like you've gone through, you've played ranked, you've done tournaments, you've done the stuff. You, land is going to be where you go to, you know, retire and, and farm like and that's fine. There's plenty of people who love Endgame WoW. They love Endgame Final Fantasy XIV. They love Endgame Shadowbringers, like all the MMO stuff. That's where they live because they want to get through the main game as quickly as possible. And it's cool. But like a draft mode tournament is um, one step in a many, many steps process of fixing that new player experience. This is not for like day one new players. This is for like two months you know what I mean? Like two months, new yeah. players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now but it's, it's also be good streaming content. It would be a great way to talk about stuff and, and really like, you know, create unique situations and, and um, kind of dive into the complexity of the game instead of, you know, everyone just so focused on, 
you know, when, when all the cards are available and people have full decks and it's just, you know, GTO or, um, you know, just play, playing perfect. Now it's like you actually, now the thinking is back in the game. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is like the beautiful part of the game is like the, when it, when there is more randomness, like right now I always yearn for like the drop of 20 new cards or 20 new skills or five new skill sets coming into the game or, or whatever, because that creates like a, it, it allows for the, that, the brain part of the game, the, you know, before the data is crunched and people figure out what's what, you know, for, for a fine moment there, you know, it's back to like, um, you know, a more pure game. And so, uh, I really like this idea for that reason. And, um, you know, it kind of even makes me think of, some of uh, some of the new attributes that or uh not attributes um for ranked play the 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 rule sets could even include stuff that makes it a little more random like uh you know for modern like dice cards not allowed this this set mm. um you know no you know like there there's other ways to kind of like start to tweak the game and and uh, in other areas that I think, you know, some of these ideas can kind of, you know, push into as well. So uh, really, really good job on this. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go to yeah. two? Yeah. Real quick on what would the prizes be for a tournament like this? Would it be additional packs provided by Splinterlands? Would it be like, what, what would it, what would, like, where would the, what would that be? Uh, new player, get, uh, like new player focus stuff. Right. So, we'll do packs we do like it's not sps rewards it's not dec rewards right. you know what i mean like it's stuff for people who want to be it could be like tournament entry passes it could be um i don't know like there, there's just so many things I've, i have plenty of other game formats that like reward soul bound stuff so i don't want to mm -hmm. say draft mode would give soul bound stuff but really like this is for people who are just getting their sea legs. You know what I mean? So we'd yeah. have to gear stuff around making sure that whatever it is, is not being farmable. Like you should not be able to try to like, Hey, I'm going to take a stab and hopefully, you know, suck at this, but I just fall into the money. That's the complete opposite of what we're trying to do. Um, right. Right. And the, the rewards aren't going to be that much because again, at the end of the day, you're it's self away. it's self funded too from yeah. the, the entries. Like it's it's six it's the cost is going to be six packs plus a little more that goes towards the prizes. Yeah. So so that's where so whatever that little extra above the packs is, and that part can be tweaked. You know, if you if if it deems that there needs to be a little more, it can always be you know upticked a little bit. It can always be decreased a little bit. As long as the six packs are, are being paid for, you know, and then that little bit extra is where, where the prizes would ultimately come from, I would think. Yeah, because, I mean, the difference between drafting six cards and seven cards um, or six packs or seven packs or whatever the pack number is, it's not going to be that obscene. Um, you know, the difference isn't going to be like, oh, if we add one extra pack in there, oh, my God, it's so unbalanced now. Like, at the end of the day, you're still just playing, you know with not a lot of <laughs> not a lot of cards so it's going to be the best that you can kind of do with it we're, we're gonna have to take a quick break here we're gonna get a quick dance from walking keys we are we are we are hold on let me get it going every time we get a new member walking keys bubbles it up and dances there we let go me, let me let me we gotta <laughs> thank you, yes, All right, thank you, Stone. Let's turn up the bubbles. <laughs> sorry, sorry, weird beard. <laughs> weird beard does not look confused. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm more, I'm jealous that I don't have a bubble maker. If I had a bubble maker, I'd be less salty about it. Well, you know, I we sell them on our store for forty nine ninety nine. You can buy oh, an official one, uh, <laughs> officially branded SHQ NFT gaming and collectibles bubble maker he's he's joking it's, it's a money opportunity yeah 
That's why we do this. We're in it for the money, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling in it. Oh my god. Uh yeah. All right, so, like, can we go to number two? Yeah, yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this video. We appreciate it. Now, do yourself a favor. Click right there. Or right there. <laughs>